Good evening everybody, welcome to the studio this evening. And I've just realised that I was going to put a message on screen and I forgot to do that. So just bear with me a second. Lazar, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Let me just add a little bit of text to the screen. Uh, as I forgot to do this... Um, That'll do. We'll leave it there. Good evening, uh, Lazar. And I hope you are well today. Um, since, as it says now on the screen, um, that the carving, the pressing with the back of the knife on my thumb uh, is making my thumb sore. I don't want to sort of make it really sore because then I can't do any carving for quite a while. So I'll just give it a rest for tonight and we'll see how it is tomorrow and see whether or not uh, I can continue. <coughs> so in the meantime, I'm going to do a little bit of jewellery because that w is a different thing that I can do for just one stream. So I'm going to continue with this, which is a bracelet that I'm making um, out of sterling silver rings. So I'm going to continue making that. I shall tip these out really carefully. <laughs> I don't want to lose any of these. Um, <coughs> um, yeah, I'm making Byzantine, so I want some open and some closed. So we're going to go, yeah, okay. So three open, two closed. Okay, you just have a ton of work to do. Okay, I kind of know that feeling. <laughs> Having a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to do. Well, I hope you get through it okay without a problem. So two for that. Count these out as I go along. Now, it's um, I've not done a lot of I've not done a lot of um, knife carving for a while. In actual fact, the cat that you probably saw me doing last night, uh, when I started doing that, I had exactly the same thing. After a, a few days, it was um, starting to press on on the back of my thumb uh, on my thumb and making it uh, making it so. Because the blades are rel you know, the I'll say the blades, the back of the blades are relatively thin, uh, and it sort of puts quite a bit of pressure on there. Uh, and another three D sculpture that I was doing, um, same thing after a few days. So uh, I know if I push it, then I'll end up with a problem, uh, and it'll be a, you know a couple of weeks or so before I can do any more carving. So rather than get that far. Uh, we'll give it a rest and, and hopefully either tomorrow or the day after we'll be, um, be able to carry on with it. So the twitch emotes. I don't understand half of the emotes that people have anyway. 
Uh, it was one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Three. Two to one side. So at this point, as we're doing chain now, I am just opening these rings up, which is uh, a case of making enough space in there uh, to allow uh, a ring to pass through. And then uh, once they once they have passed through, I can uh, I can close them, close them on the chain. Now I think if if my calculations were anything like, I probably need all of these rings that are going in front of me um, suitably opened. The ones you see me pushing to my left uh, need to be closed, uh, not opened. So. That's why I'm pushing up them out there, so I can just keep track of how many. It's the password. Good evening. Bucket the Rockets. Good evening as well. Yeah, indeed. Just, yeah, as you say, sort of unusual things, uh, especially if you're putting pressure on them. One, two, three, one, two, three. In, in an unusual place. I, um, I've had the same thing with things like files as well, especially if the files don't have a, a big handle on them. Um, it's definitely worth, uh, with tools, having nice sort of chunky handles that you can get hold of. Uh, rather than little uh, little ones like that. So, for anybody who's just joined and hasn't seen the message on the top of the screen, um, the uh, the 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 knife uh, pressing pressing on the knife um, back of the knife head with my left thumb uh, over the past few days has um, made it made it so. Um, and if I continue to try and do it like tonight, uh, I'm likely to make it sore enough that it'll be about a week or so before it recovers. So that's so just shifting a little bit, give it a, a little bit of a rest. And we hopefully we'll be all right again tomorrow to do some more carving or possibly if it still is a little bit sore the day after. But uh, that way at least we can continue without, um, without taking about a two or three week break uh, for it to recover. Uh, I'm at two over there. So three more and then two. I'm going to put those two to one side. So again, oh, I have said it. Welcome, uh, uh, Mr. Password and Mr. Uh, and Pocket the Rockets. Welcome to the studio. I hope you are well. Good evening, uh, Exilian. Nice to see you again. go to one side I can pick up my other players and I can close these so tonight though I'm not working with aluminium tonight we're working with sterling silver rings so um, Sterling silver, sterling. The sterling silver refers to there being nine hundred and twenty-five parts per thousand, or more, of silver in the the thing. <laughs> That's sterling silver. So the sterling specifically refers to that nine hundred and twenty-five parts per million uh, per thousand. So almost pure. Um, so all, all the all the 925 means is it's at least that so um, it could be pure silver but uh, 
It can still be described as sterling silver. Orbix, good evening. Welcome to the studio as well. Good evening. Interesting working with this. It's, it's both harder and softer at the same time. Correct, Laser. <laughs> that is another way of putting it, but they, they always measure it in parts per thousand. Um, so. What are we hoping to achieve? Well, two things. Uh, one is to finish this. Who's turned autofocus on on my camera? Um, and now it's gone out of focus, hasn't it? Let me just tweak that a second. About, about there. This is a, a Byzantine bracelet, or a slightly modified Byzantine bracelet. Uh, which I am hoping to finish and then I am hoping to finish uh, another one uh, with a 4-in-1 uh, um, a uh, half Persian 4-in-1 weave uh, at least I'm certainly hoping to, to start that one and, and potentially finish it to uh, tonight both of them using uh, sterling silver rings would caution however that I am not making a sterling silver bracelet I'm making a silver metal bracelet good morning from Australia good evening from the UK TMJT72 nice to see you again there thank you for dropping in time zones are wonderful and very odd things in a way <laughs> So is it Saturday morning or Sunday morning TMJT? I can't quite uh, can't quite get my mind around it. Just got three more to close, and then I'm not sure that there's enough, quite enough rings here to, um, on the table at the moment to completely finish this. But I do have a few extra, just in case. Orbix, do you work to us with? It is indeed Exilion. Exilion, that's good. Um, this is a present for my darling wife, so it's made specifically um, uh, to the width that she wants it to be, which it varies according to the bracelet. So this one was probably somewhere in the region of that 8 inch, I think. That ring has moved slightly. Just before I continue, I'm just going to straighten that one out a little bit. Uh, but for for necklaces, 
16, 17 inch, somewhere around there. Sometimes it will just depend on just quite how uh, the rings fall because you know slightly different sizes mean that you might get so if you're heading for 17 inch you might get 16.1 or 17.2 something like that come along <coughs> I'm using uh, this uh, no that's not where you're supposed to go okay now I'm gonna stroke there we go uh, this is a, a modified Byzantine uh, so because the uh, the size of the these rings normally uh, where I've just put this one through and I'll zoom in actually uh, now at this point because you don't really need to see the rings on the desk uh, you just focus and then I shall move the camera a little bit. Where's that one? And tip it up a bit. There we go. Um, normally at this point here, you would put two rings through uh, this space for a Byzantine. Um, I'm only using one because there isn't enough room to get two through there. So it's it's modified. Now let me try and get two rings on there. Two. I haven't done this for a little while and now my uh, coordination is a little bit off. <laughs> Good evening from uh, to you as well in Sweden. that be a, uh, a double day in uh, in sort of semi-English uh, exilian or am I mixing up my letters so now I put two uh, this is where I do put two through one at a, one at a time close it up Okay, that ring's no good, it's split. So I'm gonna in uh, in opening that one the uh, the ring has actually cracked. Uh, yeah. So that ring is actually of no use to me, which is a pity. <laughs> These things uh, a little bit pricey. Five a.m. on a Sunday morning. Okay. So Australia's ahead. Uh, and then just fold those two back, and I've got space to put the next one through. I hope I don't have any more that are split. Okay, you've got to remember to stay. The only trouble with close focus is remembering to stay on frame. Which I shall endeavour to do. It isn't, but it but being quite a malleable metal or quite a relatively soft metal, you wouldn't expect it to actually crack. Um, which is what it appears to have done. I don't know if I can actually get it to to show up on the uh, on the 
I might do if I can focus, if I f uh, hold that in the right place and focus this. Uh, there you go. You can actually see there that, that black vertical vertical line there. He says, trying to remember that this camera is um, backwards. Um, that's, it's actually split. Uh, that's obviously done when I twisted the ring to open it. Uh, good evening, uh, Fluffy Twiggler. Yeah, don't worry about the future. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not going to throw that away because if I get a load, well, hopefully I won't ever get a load of them, but if I get a load of sort of silver, bad silver you know, rings like that, put them together, I can sell the silver. Oh, I was just wondering whether, um, Exilium, whether um, you know, your, sp your spelling there of good uh, in sort of the uh, Englishified keyboard, wouldn't that be a double D? Or have I just mixed up the lettering? Um, so I've got two through there, so I want to put another. I'll refocus now that I've come back this far. There we go. So yeah, being a relatively soft metal, I would have ex expected um, it, you know, not to not to crack like that. How are we all? Well, I'm not too bad, apart from a slightly sore thumb. Um, fluffy Twiggler, um, I hope uh, and trust that you are also well. I am on spear, I am on camera. I'm kind of a little bit afraid to grasp this, this, these rings too hard. Um, it being relatively soft. There we go, two rings. Uh, you're reading... Oh, you're allergic to gold. Gold is supposed to be about one of the most unallergic things going, yeah, TMJ. But, uh, there's that. Hmm, interesting, but... Uh, so, so it's made out of silver, silver wedding ring. Well, in itself would be uh, quite unusual. Okay. I know um, some of the some of the other. Um, Countries, um, some of the some of the letters when you uh, some of the extra letters when you translate them get sort of uh, changed like that. So things like the double D. Not not you know not actually having a double. It's not actually a double D, but it's just the way it translates. But there we go. There's only just enough space to get one of the rings through here. Uh, 
Once it's through, it's fine, but um, getting it through uh, is a little bit of a challenge. Come along. There we go. This came about actually because I um, I got the wrong rings. Yeah, definitely shiny. <laughs> definitely shiny. Um, the um, aluminium rings are uh, usually, s or even stainless steel rings. Rings are used for sort of chain mail or for jewellery, anything like stainless steel, um, aluminium, copper, etc. They're all um, sized by internal diameter of the ring. And so when I ordered these to make um, a, a bracelet, I, um, I ordered the size I was after. The only problem is that um, these are measured by the external diameter. <laughs> so they were too small for what I wanted. Uh, and they're only just, so, you know, the Byzantine um, here. Um, they are just big enough uh, to be used for, with the with the uh, with the um, slight, slight modification of only one joining ring rather than two. Yeah, uh, uh, something like that, isn't it? Uh, I can't quite get it. Um, yeah, the double letter translations of some of the extra characters. So you see, you get you get lessons on carving. You get um, uh, you get uh, sort of uh, information about pussy cats, uh, and now it now a language lesson as well. But a language lesson there from Ixillian rather than from me. Yeah, it's kind of well. My, uh, I was about to say I, uh, I'm not very good at uh, at languages. Uh, that's a slight misnomer, I guess, because I I do know quite a few, but they're all computer languages. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's kind of cool the way um, you guys are. Well, you guys, full stop. Um, outside of the UK, all. Um, uh, all are amazing English speakers, and um, I'm not even an amazing English speaker. I'll measure this in a second. I just, in fact, I'll measure it now. Let's see how long I've got this. Just over six and a half inches. So a little bit more. <laughs> oh, I guess there's quite a few people might disagree with that, though, Laser. As to who has the best accent. thought you like going to your um, uh, family-in-law uh, Fuffy Twiggler So working with these um, these rings is the similar to working with um, aluminium. There's nothing um, 
significantly different about it. The metal is, as uh, has been mentioned, actually probably a little bit softer than aluminium. Um, aluminium does uh, does crack, so you know, just because um, this, the sterling silver did it doesn't mean aluminium won't. I have had rings break on me there as well. No, that's just a I'll try and keep in focus as well. <laughs> Diplomatic answer there for a fluffy twig last <laughs> Okay, so I mean, as, as you do things like this, little tricks come to mind. Like you see me put a ring on either side here, rather than I started by putting two on one side, but by putting one on either side, I actually have a little bit more room. It feels like to um, uh, to actually get hold of the the ring to twist it into position. I mean, in theory, I've got exactly the same amount of space on both sides, but. Uh, as I had before, because uh, you know players take up so much space and they take up so much space, but it kind of just feels um, better. So, so one of those little techniques that you learn, yeah, you know, makes things easier for yourself. Um, other people may find doing it the other way a lot easier. I'm a little bit worried about cracking a ring now that I've seen that one cracked. Once it's weaved though it should be okay. What computer languages do you know? Um, uh, I can read more than I can actively program. Um, and some I can dabble in more than I can actively write. But we've got C, C++, Forth, um, C Sharp, Java, uh, JavaScript, um, just trying to think now. Um, there's another one I've been well. Well, there's there's basic and visual basic derivatives uh, of things like that. Um, that's before I, I I still I can still write 6502 assembler, 6800 assembler. Um, I can do the uh, assembler for uh, microchip controllers. Uh, and then, then there's things like uh, HTML coding, um, ASP. I've closed that ring without putting any extra on, which is why it looks odd to me. Uh, okay, I'll do it this way then. Um, then, oh, what's XML uh, and X uh, and um, uh, CSS. Well, you know, quite a few anyway. Um. <laughs> Do you mean old school or new school? Old school hackers, yes. New school hackers, no. No interest in that. Um, the word for those people that don't know the. Hackers originated a long time ago, um, and the hackers, the old time hackers, are actually just people who write code. They don't break into systems, which is kind of the new definition of hackers. Which is kind of a pity um, that it got sort of repurposed, shall we say. Um, but uh, I just uh, I write code to do a job, so um, 
sometimes it's better done in one language than another and if I need to learn the language to do it. I, I started learning Java in particular because at one time I started writing a little bit of a mod for Minecraft. Um, never actually progressed it because I decided to do something else instead. But um, that was uh, that was one reason why uh, why I started learning Java, for example, and then I used that to write uh, another nice little uh, project for myself, which was um, basically a clock uh, on a which displayed pictures on a um, monitor, so you could leave the thing running twenty four hours a day. Uh, and it uh, it did a uh, a rolling picture display basically slideshow, but with a clock on the bottom. So it was uh, it did uh, two jobs in one. <laughs> oh, patience! That word patience again, Exilia. I'm not altogether sure that's um, that's needed. I mean this. Strictly speaking, in many computer languages, there's a lots of words and lots of things, concepts, but you really only have a few words. Um, I mean, uh, something like Visual Basic, which is one of the simplest, you, there's only about five or six keywords in there, which are the basic construct stuff. Uh, and then everything else just uh, is almost derived from that. Now then, let's see how long this is. That's ooh, seven and three quarter inches. So I am just going to ask Mrs. Aragonart, whom this is for, if this is long enough, if I need to be shorter or a little bit longer. So I shall be back just momentarily because I'm just going to disappear over to that side. Well, Mrs. Aragonart, I can perhaps uh, go back to the school. It'll be about there with the bed. Okay, so it's uh, it's right. It's just the right length. So what we're going to do is put a clasp on it. I have here which is also a sterling yeah. silver clasp if I want to open a ring to do this Oh, you would be awkward, wouldn't you? That last ring. Go on, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I'm just... Uh, before I do that, I'm going to just check that that's the right way and whether I need to put an extra ring on it. Not that it matters too much uh, here, but um, for the Byzantine, with it being almost a round bracelet, but I just want to check that it's going to lay flat. So, yep, that's going to lay vertically. It's horizontal. I put that on, that clasp is going to lay vertically. It's going to lay with a twist in it. So we will put another ring on the end. So what I was just doing there is, if I hold that up like this, um, and I raise, I raise it like this, I'm keeping the. I'm doing is making sure that the bracelet stays sort of square. So when I get down to the bottom, 
he says very carefully trying to get hold of this what I've got here is these two rings at right angles to each other so if I was to put a clasp on and at right angles to each other that clasp would go in on the ring like that which means that the clasp is also vertical which means it won't actually clip to that without twisting and uh, it doesn't matter so much in um, on a base antenna as I say because it's it's basically it's square but it's sort of basically round and so that little twist that 90 degree twist wouldn't be noticed but on something like a wider bracelet like um, uh, like the half Persians that twist would be extremely noticeable and quite irritating so what I've got to do is put another ring onto one of these just to twist it so that the clasp um, it, it lies naturally and then uh, all's good now the true kextillion may well be finding a project which is interesting and then because uh, you find if you find a project that's interesting then what you're more likely to uh, to find is you, you don't actually notice you learn yourself learning um, I'm just thinking that's a bit of a big ring to put on there so I'm going to do is not put that one on I'm going to put a little one on When, uh, when you're interested in a subject that you're trying to uh, to achieve with a program, you uh, you quite often you see uh, you quite often will find that um, you you learn a lot easier or a lot quicker um, just because you've you've got that interest in it. When if you're trying to learn a language, just sit down and learn it you know and then and then ex if you like expect to be able to write programs it can get quite hard i can't get hold of this ring there we go i'm just going to do it now is slip this on there And there we go. There is one silver metal bracelet made using sterling silver rings. And this thing weighs quite a bit. In fact, just for the fun of it, I'm just going to weigh it. I've got a set of scales here, which I'll just uh, so it weighs thirty-three point six grams. Uh, that's the that's sterling silver. Now, just for the fun of it, I'm going to weigh this, which is kind of about the same. Looks bigger. Um, that's seventeen grams, <laughs> seventeen point eight. So this. <laughs> bracelet is twice the weight of that so that's just the difference between aluminium and uh, and sterling silver rings okay so I shall put that down and turn that off what we're going to do now is make it a different bracelet um, but the second one is for me uh, I'm just looking for the bag. So I'm going to put these away, keep them safe. And 
And now you're going to get the fun of watching me make, or try and make, the start of a um, half version four in one bracelet. Okay, laser, no problem. Good evening. And I hope these rigs will do it. <laughs> so I will. S I'm just going to open about ten. These have been wound the other way. Um, yeah, the um, the these these. Um, Ring, uh, the way the rings are made, if you weren't aware, is the, the, it, they're made from wire which is wrapped onto a, 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 a cylindrical, what they call a mandrel. <coughs> and generally speaking, the, they're all sort of wrapped anti-clockwise. Um, these are being uh, wrapped clockwise. No particular problem with it, it's just uh, unusual. All I'm doing here is just um, opening them. Okay, we've got a few here. Uh, so I'm going to want... A bit of uh, a bit of wire uh, to to help me with this, and and I'm going to want some closed rings as well. <laughs> I've just remembered, so I shall close some of these. These rings are particularly have turned out to be particularly terrible for getting themselves wrapped uh, amongst each other. Kind of annoying as well when they do that. Oh good, thank you. If I jumble you about, will you all fall off? Ah, there's the join. Um, it's like, um, these are a bit like, sort of, you can get puzzles made out of sort of odd bits of metal on, or, or often sort of big nails. Oh, blow it. Let's just open. I was trying to avoid opening them. I don't like twisting them open if I don't have to, but I can spend all evening just trying to fiddle them out from amongst each other. If I open them, they'll just come out a lot quicker. Come on. I'm getting a little bit annoyed with them now.
It is going to be interesting to see if it actually works because these are relatively thin rings. And they're a little bit thinner than I would normally uh, normally use in aluminium, so we'll uh, we'll see how they uh, how they go. Now close to quarter of an inch in diameter. Um, if I remember rightly, um, six point, I think they're nine millimeter diameter of these things. I'm going to do a few because um, when I'm doing a half Persian, one of the things I've found is if you try and put it down on the table, to sort of open or close some extra rings, uh, unless you're really careful. You you kind of lose weight, lose the pattern, and uh, I frequently have ended up starting um, more than once again um, with with the half Persians just because of that. There, there's a about eight eight or so rings before the pattern is self-sustaining; it holds itself in place. And uh, once you get past that first bit, then it becomes a lot easier. But that first bit can be a little bit frustrating. So we're going to find out if I can manage it. So, uh, in theory, I start this with four rings, but I'm going to start it with three because the, the fourth ring is never actually used. just ends ends up being taken off at the end okay so I want to if I remember rightly I want to go through that yeah I want to go through there like that and there and there and put an extra ring on here and I'm off frame aren't I And this is where not careful I've lost the pattern I know those two and I know that one yeah I've done something wrong with this Oh, have I? No, I haven't. I think I'm halfway there, but I think I've got something wrong. Hmm. Start again. That's the real. This is the real frustrating thing with them. Um, with half Persian. Oh, is that it? Have I sorted these out? I sorted this out. I might have done. If 
if I have, well, I'm going to have a go at trying this. So I'm going to want to go, I've been through that one, I want to go through that one. That one. And then that one. And put a ring on there. And I have to have another go at sorting these out. At this point, I know that goes like that, that goes like that. That's not the right way for that. <laughs> that. Come on, because in about another ring or two, this would have sort. This would be nice, as what they call a stable pattern, and we could just go from there. Uh, that's the ring I've just put on. That's the ring I've just fed. Those three I know go together like that. You know what? I'm going to start that again. I've completely lost that pattern, I think. Um, yeah. I can mess about, uh, but I'm going to start that pattern again. Ow. This is where frustration can set in with this. I've now done this half Persian about four or five times. You'd think by this point I would have it down. And I kind of have. Um, but not quite enough at the start. That's the three rings that I need to start this with. That's the end, so let's take that off. Okay. That goes through there. What I'm going to do, where's my cocktail stick? It's there. I'm going to do that because then I know or should know where the ring is going to go because they kind of just lay on top of each other. Now then, uh, actually I want another one in there. I'm missing one because it needs f it's four in one. So put this one in. There. And I shall get my cocktail stick. And we'll put that through there and that through there. That's the four rings. And those four rings go through this one. Hence the four in one. And now then.
So this one will go through that one. One, come on, one, two. This is going to be awkward at the moment, so it goes through there, and then I add a full ring on there, and I will close this up, doing my best at this point, not to lose that cocktail stick out of there, because that's holding this pattern in place. There, okay, let go of that. Have I just looped that through the wrong way? Have I caught that where I shouldn't have done? Nope, that one looks to be laid in the right way. I've... Yeah, it's laid in the right way. So now then, this next ring goes to go onto the cocktail ring like that. That's cocktail ring. Cocktail stick! There's no ring on the cocktail bit. That's through there, that's through there, so it goes through. Come along. All right, through there, through there. Yeah, come on. No. There, and then a ring goes on. This is why they always say to beginners, you know, do uh, do something nice and simple, like you know, like Byzantine or something like. I'm just going to put this lower down so I can keep the cocktail stick in place at the moment. So sorry, it's off camera. <laughs> it's almost like knitting, is this? Um, I kind of feel like I'm almost knitting this with the way uh, I've got everything on the cocktail stick. Yeah, Exilia. <laughs> Indeed. One. Two. I think I think it's the, just these the size of these rings that's making this just a little bit awkward. Uh, with slightly tighter ring, uh, slightly smaller internal diameters, this would probably be easier. Right. Can I take that off? Do I dare take this off now? I'm kind of nervous about taking it off. I'll do one. I'll do one more before I take it off. And uh, okay, so I want to close a close a few more rings before. Well, I've got no closed ones left, so I need to close a few more. And there we go. Two. 
space. Okay, let's go with three. And it's th yeah, through that one, through that one, and then yeah, maybe it is time to take this off the cocktail stick. When I only wanted to one more on the cocktail stick, can't you behave yourself? Go on. There. So I keep. Uh, I'd have to zoom out to probably to stay on camera more. <laughs> more often. I'm being brave. There we go. Is that right? Yeah, I think I've got that right now. One, two, pick up that one. Yeah. On stream. Okay, and then. That one goes on there. I close that up, flip it back. I've got one more that's uh, that's closed, that's okay, so that's that one. That one. You can come back off because I have no idea where you've just gone. So I want that ring, I want that ring, and I want that ring like that. And then that goes... In, <laughs> in there. just lost everything onto the floor okay I can't see that at the moment I will have to look for it later This is getting a little bit frustrating. Uh, 
I have no problems at all doing this with aluminium rings. For some reason I seem almost incapable of getting these sterling silver rings. Not only through the right places, but even to actually stay in place. As you can see, they keep, they keep popping off. Okay, get hold of you nice and tight. You are going on there and you're staying. Right, but at least now the pattern is established. I'm going to zoom out. Good evening, Fear Reaper. Nice to see you again. How are you doing? But I'm actually now getting the correct weave, he says, thinking that looks a bit odd just around there. Something is odd around there. Something is definitely odd around that. That ring there. Okay. Yep, I've got a ring that's out of place. I'm not sure if doing this is going to fix it. I'm either going to fix it or mess it up further. So that ring, I think, wants to come. Yeah, I think that wants to go. ring wants to go where it doesn't want to go. Right. So when a ring wants to go where it doesn't want to go or doesn't want to go where it wants to go, um, I'm stuck with uh, zooming it out. Uh, you're definitely an idiot. Uh, Fear Reaper, um, yes, I was carving last, well, been carving for a few days now. But uh, I've got a, uh, the problem I've got is that the uh, carving with the knives, the, uh, uh, I drive the knife with my left hand, with my left thumb specifically. And um, it's basically got sore from doing that. Which means that if I carried on doing it, then I'd end up um, not being able to carve for a while. Um, for, you know, for about a week or two. So what I've uh, what I was just doing is um, doing something different for today. Uh, give my thumb a rest, and we'll see how it uh, how it goes tomorrow. So what I've been carving up to now is is <coughs> is this. Oh, it's okay. So. The sleeping pussy cat 
So we've been carving that. Oops. So with a bit of luck, we'll be back to doing that tomorrow. Uh, just depending on uh, just how uh, what my thumb what my thumb feels like. And now I'm just trying to work out where the error is in this particular thing that I've done here. So essentially, I've got to do is just back it back out till I get to the place where I'm having. I've got the problem. Take that wing out. Looks like it might be okay, so let's close up a ring so that I can put it back. So I will want to. Yeah, there's a ring missing. There's a ring missing somewhere around there. That's what's. Uh, it's all the way back there. Um, was that what I think it is? Uh, it is indeed. Thank you very much for doing that, Excelian. That is most kind of you. I do appreciate that very much. Thank you. There is a ring missing. I know there's a ring missing on this somewhere. No, it's okay. I think what it is, is I, I missed putting a ring on there. So let's see, let me see if I can fix this without starting again. So I want to pick up those last two and that one that I've just put on there through there and then slot. Oh, okay, I need to close another ring. I slot that into there. Close it up properly. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I've got. I'm trying desperately to concentrate on working out what I've messed up on this. I think I've got it right now. I think I've got it right. The um, this re this this starting point for both for the half Persian, uh, whether it's a four in one or a three in one. Uh, uh, it's a little bit frustrating because it's not until you get about this length that it kind yeah it kind of becomes self-organizing or self-supporting I think I've messed up something at the start but that's not not much of a problem I can I can fix that 
it still doesn't look right. If if you if you look, the pattern isn't it isn't steady. It's sort of in chunks. So I've I've still done something wrong. Um, one, two, three, four. So we're going to solve this by leaving that bit that I've just done and doing it again. It's going to be the easiest way at this point of fixing it and I'll take that apart a little bit later on that section and reuse the rings. So it's it's kind of frustrating when that happens, but yeah, sometimes it's kind of like cut your losses and uh, yeah, start again. Because uh, I kind of find that quite often when you do that, yeah, it sort of works a lot better the second time. Uh, what I'm going to basically just do at this point is sort of sit back if you like, relax, chill out, and then, uh, yeah, hopefully, we won't have a problem with it this second time around. I do wish these weren't all twisted together though. Just something that happens to them in the in the bag, uh, in transport, but it's a little bit frustrating when you have to sort of start separating them all out from each other. It makes it sound really frustrating to do any of this stuff, doesn't it? But it's it's <laughs> when it's working, it's quite enjoyable. <laughs> Uh, let's have a few more rings and then I'll have another go. Right, I'll close up these, these two and then Okay, so we start with an open ring and we put, in theory, okay, I'm actually going to put four rings on there. It's a four in one. There's the four rings. I know the first ring that I put on there isn't going to get used, but... Uh, I will put it on for consistency. So, what I start by doing is putting this cocktail stick through those rings there. That should help me keep position. that one and that one get hold of the ring tightly so it goes on I'm just taking this lower down so that I don't drop that cocktail stick out because sorting out which rings go where will be a little bit um, time consuming again. And that ring goes over there like that. I think, is that the right way? Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Have I made a mess up already? I've certainly messed something already. Okay. Mm. I did say I liked doing this, didn't I? Four rings, a cocktail stick. That is the right way of doing that, isn't it? Um, if I've got that like that, if I twist that way, that one goes there. Yeah, it's like that. Cocktail stick through. That way I cannot get them in the wrong position, in theory. All right, I'll pick you up in a minute. So, this next one wants to go through that ring there, through that ring there. I've got myself double thinking myself now as to whether whether I'm actually doing this right or wrong. That one, that one, that one goes through there. through there, like that, that's better, and then that goes through there, and I close that one up, cocktail stick, so I don't lose where I am. Excuse me, I'm going out of frame, but at this stage, I want to get this thing right. Okay. And that will then go over the top of there. Where are you going? What are you? Hello everybody, welcome to a really, really, really annoying little bit of a stream. <sighs> what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to do something I should have done about 10 minutes ago. 
and that is I am going to look up my reference picture for this the instructions that I use and that way I can look at the reference picture um, Because it really is easy. <laughs> I know I don't making it look easy, am I? I'm actually making it look like one of the hardest things going. Ah, uh, dear. And yeah, it really, it really is a, it really is a nice, uh, and, and and it should be an easy weave to do. That that ring's got four on it. Okay, so I'll take this one off. In actual fact, we'll start with, yeah, we'll start with four on there. Okay. So one, two, three. That one is like that. Okay. Through one, through two, through three, and that one, come along rings, one, two, three, that one goes like that because it comes back now okay two three four okay that's going to come back now that ring Is that it? I come back through there having gone through that one. That's it there. That's the start position. Yep, and then the next one. Uh confusion. <laughs> I know how <laughs> Oh, it's not easy. It's not easy to explain either. Um, there's frustration for you. I have just snapped my cocktail stick. Let me just get another one. Almost all, in fact, all. Um, weaves uh, uh, chain mail weaves are repetitive so once you once you start you basically just keep doing the same thing time after time after time but with with some of the weaves it's vitally important that you get the first few rings in the right place if you don't then what happens is it just doesn't work 
the weave looks just completely wrong. And when uh, you know, and, and it falls apart basically. It just doesn't work, and that's kind of the the situation. I kept get, I kept getting something wrong in the in the starting area, uh, and when when that happens, because it, everything's repetitive, you keep getting that mistake, uh, and that's what happened with the first lot that I just put to one side. I kept getting the same mistake. I kept getting a wider gap than I should have got. And this one, it was just a case of holding everything in the right way. Um, but yeah, beer sounds really good at the moment. <laughs> it's kind of a squeezing too hard. I snapped my cattail stick because I was squeezing too hard. Okay. So this ring wants to go through there and through there. You see, I know, I know this pattern. Um, I don't have a problem in doing this pattern. The problem I have is in starting this pattern. And it's kind of, I have the same problem every time. And yet, you know, it's it really is a very, in theory, a really simple, easy pattern to do. And yet, I just don't seem to be able to do it. Let me put that there like that. That looks good. Okay. And I have just put, been putting that down. I've just messed that. So let me take that off. Right, so the key with this, not to get frustrated with it. I want to go through ring number two, ring number three, and ring number four. goes on the other side so that I can take a fixed ring and put it on there okay before I so I'm going to lay this down on the desk no it's done it again one two right Lay this down carefully on the desk so that the rings don't jump out of place. Close, close that ring there. Take that ring and I want it to be like that. Okay. Now do the same thing again. And I'm talking to myself, talking my way through this. Because one thing sometimes I find is uh, once it gets to this point where you, know, you keep dropping rings, uh, they keep going in not quite the right position that you want them in. I quite often find that if I just talk to my, talk myself through what I'm doing, um, then it helps an awful lot. I want to pick up that. Okay, I want to pick up that. And on the other side, I want to pick up that. And then I take a full ring and put it on there. 
then carefully put these down on the desk until I've closed this ring. And I put this ring over the cocktail stick like that. Now the pattern's working now. <laughs> oh dear. You have a heart attack. Yeah, I. Hmm. Untangling headphones, yes. An interesting challenge. Um, I don't know. I quite like untangling knots, so. This it this actually isn't uh, bad. As I say, it's it's quite logical. That the real problem with this really is holding just holding the rings in the right position. I've twist that one's gone through the wrong place. There we go. Because really, what what happens with this is all the rings just lay on top of each other, one on top of the other, and they do it in such a way that. Uh, you know, it, it forms the pattern that you're after. But um, it's it's sort of it is really clear and it's really it's it's a really easy thing to follow. But I I know I'm making it look really hard. But I can now see that this is uh, this is working and uh, within a another closed ring okay within a another couple of rings this should be self-supporting again and then I can uh, I can then take it off the cocktail stick and it should then progress a bit faster as well I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of laying quite neatly now, which is what I'm after. Uh, a cocktail stick? <laughs> um, no, not really, not that I'm aware of. It's, I mean, literally now, it, this, this now should be okay. I shouldn't have any problems uh, continuing with this. Um, I do need some more closed rings, of which that one is closed. Let's close this one up. Um, I'll put these two closed rings on and then I'll take it off the cocktail stick. Uh, I shall be brave. Um, you kind of do, you know, it becomes its own jig in a way. But it's just getting it's just getting those first few. Uh, if you're using slightly smaller rings, then it's uh, uh, the first you know the larger the ring, the larger the gap is. Is it takes a little bit longer for it to be self-supporting for it to become its own jig. But once it does, then it's um, it becomes quite easy. It's, you know, that's that's one of the bits that winds you up if you're not careful. Is you sort of just like that, trying to put a ring on and then it drops off the uh, of where you were holding it. In actual fact, at this this point, the cocktail stick is actually starting to be more of a problem than a help, but. Uh, it's starting now to get in the way
Okay, that feels better and looks better. So we shall open rings and close rings. One. These larger rings are quite st uh, springy as well. Three. Four. Let's just switch to them. actually thinking about just generally jewellery making um, or because I don't actually know of any real jigs for making any jewellery to be honest um, if you're talking about sort of braided braided um, jewellery made by braiding cords then of course you get the um, you get this sort of well, it's not exactly a jig but it's the cord holder if you like um, which is uh, you know, as, which allows you to weave the cords on the top of it, and it then sort of drops down the drops down the middle, does the cord. Uh, so I guess you could call that a jig, but it's it's sort of a very loose uh, definition of it being a jig. Um, but uh, apart from that, I don't really uh, really know of any. Um, I'm guessing, I guess, if if you're talking about also volume production. Of something, then yes, you possibly would have um, uh, jigs then uh, available to uh, for things to be made from. But Okay, so I can now weave some more. So if I pick this up, and it's sort of, as I say, sort of self-supporting now. So I kind of know that I go through that one. I go through, I go through two, and flip that over the top. It is the way I sort of always describe it to myself. Um, Yeah, these big rings aren't helping me too much. Then I flip uh, a new ring on there. Close that up. I pick up the last two. One, two, and flip that over the top. And put a ring on and close it up and as you can see now pick up the last two one two flip that over the top go all the way put a ring on A ring one two flip that over the top put a ring on so hopefully now now you can now you see what I mean by it actually is relatively easy to do uh, you know okay I'm saying that I, I've had practice and uh, 
but from um, from the starting position where it was really you know, I was struggling quite a bit uh, and you can see now uh, now that this thing is self-supporting um, I can I'm basically just motoring through this quite easily I suppose one way in which I could um, cheat in a way is um, leave a little bit of chain uh, you know make make this over long if you like um, then so sort of take the links out to leave a bit left so that next time I just start from there and always sort of leave a bit left um, over and that way then I wouldn't have half the problem uh, in starting because it really is as you saw the problem it was was with starting now that I've started um, you know I can uh, I can motor through this I just wish they weren't all fastened together like this. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not my plan. I mean, it, I have seen that suggested in in quite a few places. Um, that uh, you know, for for doing things like this, the the the, th the um, three in one is the sa it's the same. It's 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 a really awkward one to start, but once you've got it going, um, it becomes a heck of a lot easier. And um, I thought I'd got it figured out, um, and it really is just a case of almost of holding on to the right ring. If you hold on to the you know the right ring, so or just the last couple, so you can tell them apart, then um, you sort of just trust to the fact that you're doing it right, so to speak. Um, then uh, then you can get to it very quickly, that through that starting area, and once you're through it. Yeah, I've got a few more rings here. I'll weave these in and then uh, 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 we'll open and close some more. See, this one is for me. I'm actually making my own bracelet here. Come on. I've been told all these nice ladies and gentlemen how easy it is now. Don't make a mess out of it and embarrass me rings. Not that I'd be embarrassed, but... Come on. 
You are trying to do it, aren't you, Rings? You're really trying. You, you guys will notice I talk to them. I don't know quite what effect it has on the rings, but it makes me feel better. And now, from being quite tense not so long ago, I've ca I sort of feel really calmed down now, <laughs> um, and uh, and gone back to enjoying doing this. Come back. Now, normally I'd stop about now, but you know what? I'm going to carry on for a bit longer. Mainly because it's working so nice, and I kind of don't want to stop when it's working so nice. Two, three. So, the, so sort of a, I won't say it's kind of a joke, but it's almost like, you know, if it takes an hour to make a half Persian bracelet, uh, it's 45 minutes of starting multiple times, followed by 15 minutes of actually doing the bracelet itself. <laughs> tell them who's boss. I can tell them who's boss. The problem is there's a difference between me telling them who's boss and them knowing that it's them. <laughs> it's like cats you can go to a cat and you can tell the cat that you're boss and it just goes mm-hmm mm-hmm and you can sort of see it's doing that in its eyes you know it's yeah and who are you trying to kid You know, they it just the thought suddenly occurred to me here. You know, you, the um, what would be really nice, uh, and I, I half suspect many um, people who do chain mail would agree. What would be really nice is um, is to have somebody who opened all the rings for you and closed them all. Because <laughs> the, the real fun bit is the weaving. Um, the not so fun bit is sitting here and sort of opening and closing these rings, uh, which I've used all my closed rings up, so I will be sitting here in a moment opening and closing some more. Okay, so we have got now, in a relatively short period of time, a four inch bracelet. John, 4179, hello, welcome to the studio. And I am now doing a lot better than I was um, only about 15 minutes ago when I was getting really frustrated with um, this uh, chainmail bracelet that I'm making because I just couldn't get it to start properly. But once I did, I'm feeling a lot better and a lot calmer than I was. So thank you for asking and I hope you're doing well as well. Switch pliers to that one. I just need to open loads and a few of these. Six, 
keep them separate then I don't get them mixed up One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, those two add up to each other. I need, I need an even number of open rings and closed rings with this particular weave. Uh, Zin18, thank you very much for following. That's most kind of you. Only a few more of these. Actually, there's actually well, I was going to say there's actually a hundred silver rings on the uh, on the desk, but in actual fact, some of them are currently bound up in that failed start. Um, I don't actually know how many I need for uh, a bracelet for me, which needs to be about eight inches. Um, and I've just lost count. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Okay. Um, so let's just kind of just uh, make it and see how big it needs to be. So for new people watching, I'm working here with sterling silver rings. So 92.5. Uh, percent or more silver in the alloy that's uh, making up these rings. And what I'm making is a half Persian four in one weave bracelet for myself, which I have to describe as a silver metal bracelet. Right. Back to weaving. Ah, make sure I'm on frame. There we go. One, two, pick that one up and grab. There we go. So go through. That's it. Thank you. wraps around there like that and I pick up the last 
well sort of the last two rings as I call it it's actually sort of in the last three rings it's rings one and two I pick up on the left side I then pick up the third ring on the right side <coughs> uh, which sort of puts this one ring so that this one ring I'm feeding sort of through the middle um, so sort I've of gone in through the middle and then uh, I put an extra ring up the back which then forms the new third ring so that's how the, you know that's, wh that's where the rings grow from is this one this is the ring that grows the length this one that I'm putting in now kind of locks just locks them into place it actually forms part of the weave but it sort of locks them into place that one is opening a little bit more so one and two and the third and before I close that remember to put one on the back of it and that's often what I forget to do is I'll, I'll be doing this and I'll busy close the ring and then suddenly thought hang on a minute I'm missing one I've forgotten to add one Ideally, I'd like to finish this, um, but not very long, I don't think, um, or Bex, to be honest. I'd like to finish it just from the sake of, just from the point of view of, it would be nice to finish it. I've, I've sort of had these rings for over a week or so now, and I've kind of wanted to uh, to do it, so... It would be kind of nice for Mrs. Aragon Art and I both to wear a brand new bracelet together. Because hers is on the desk. We finished hers at the start of the stream. And, uh, and then started mine. But given that we uh, get through this fairly quickly. Uh, oh, I can't quite count. I was about to say I've got one extra uh, closed ring on it. But I, uh, looks like one just moved. Right, two more to put on, then we'll see how long it is and whether I need any extra. Oh, 
Come here, can't go away. Actually, I must remember to find that ring that's on the floor. These rings are about 8 or 9p each. So I don't want to be losing too many of them. Indeed, I did, uh, Exilium. There is actually. Um, there is actually a um, a shop live on uh, on um, Etsy. Uh, you might be able to guess. Um, it, it's um, it's actually Turgon art. <laughs> so uh, if anybody wants to look. It's um, etsy.com slash shops slash Seligan Art. So I'm at seven inches. And that's what one, two, three, four, five, six. So about another, well, I'm just short of seven inches. Uh, another six, about another, so about another 14 rings. Should um, Should finish this. But what I'll just do is grab that. And do that. That's the um, that's the uh, that's the shop on Etsy. Hasn't got everything up there uh, just yet, so one. And it's only got the jewellery on there at the moment. Um, I do hope that I'll get a chance to add some of the pyrography and other things on there. Seven. Eight. What I'm doing here is feeling around for where the join is because uh, I can't actually see it. 11. Fourteen, and just for the fun of it, we will just undo those. So one, two, three, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I need fourteen. So seven open. Four. Uh, 
five. Seven. Right, let's weave these in and then check it's long enough. If it is, we'll put a clasp on it. If it's not, I've got a few more. Wasn't quite sure how many rings I needed. I sort of calculated it out, but there's calculation and there's practice. <laughs> And often the two don't quite match. They should do, but the thing with uh, with the rings is they do vary slightly in size. Um, they they're wrapped tightly on the mandrel, but as they come off the mandrel, so the mandrel might be you know, quarter inch, you know, six millimeters, something like that. Uh, but as they come off, the 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 coils relax very slightly, so they change they change size. And also, um, these are all saw cut rings. And what that means is they quite literally take a really, really fine saw and slice uh, through them, which takes a bit of the material away. And what I do when I close them is I squeeze them together a little bit, which of course changes the diameter again. And so um, it's, you know, whilst they have a nominal diameter, uh, of like nine millimeters externally and they're 1.2 millimeter wires and you would think that means they're a certain size then they are plus or minus a bit And just like that, we've just been through 14 rings. So, um, see how long that is. You know, I'm doing this. And of course, I actually want seven and a half, but I've got my wrist here. Oh, actually. Okay. Um, this... Uh, okay, I will show you. This is on my wrist. It, it just <laughs> the the problem of bracelets always that problem. So let me just flip that around. Um, the ends just come together on my wrist. Only just there. Oh dear, I can't twist my arm around enough to hold these in place. But the ends just come together, which is sort of an eight inch bracelet on me <laughs> I'm trying to show you but um, take my word for it um, how about that will that work better doing that way yeah you can sort of see 8 inch uh, is my thing when I put the clasp on it it's actually going to get about half an inch uh, short uh, longer but that's actually not too bad because that's a close fitting bracelet for me so um, half an inch longer would, would be more better for me shall we say so um, I need to finish this off um, on both sides. Now, if I show you there, if I get hold of this end ring, it's, it sort of it sort of um, pulls very slightly in the wrong wrong direction uh, and upsets the ring pattern just at the end. And this one's kind of the same. What I'm just going to do is do two things. Uh, one is, I'm going to take this last ring off of here. Uh, 
if I can find the end. Because this that ring kind of isn't needed. These two together sort of form the end pattern. And I'm going to put a clasp on there. Um, which are, where's my, oh there they are. So let's get a clasp out. Now the clasp won't go directly on there, it needs a ring uh, to hold it in place. So what I was going to do is I've got a couple of, I've got some smaller rings. I've got two lots of smaller rings indeed actually. He says, looking for where they have gone. I've got some super small rings, which may be a little bit, oh no, they won't be. I was going to say they might be a little bit too small for this. Come on. There we go. Because I've actually got to get three three rings through this. Uh, come on, drop back into place. That's it. Needs to be opened a little bit more. I need the, these um, final two and then I need the clasp itself. Right now then, I put this brace. If I were to put this bracelet on, you can see the clasp lies flat against my skin, which is what it needs to do. Oops, there's it now. Okay, so put it on my wrist. It's it lies flat. Now, were to try and fasten, and and this is the end. Were to, were to try to fasten onto there, the clasp would want to sit up on its end to get through through these rings. So what I'm going to do is put a hobby, put a ring that's vertical on these, so they can get this clasp through. Now the problem is that this one is probably a bit too big, so I'm going to take this off. So this is this is a superfluous end ring again, like on the other side. Because the you get two that come together to form the pattern. Now the ring I've just used to to um, to fasten this on with the the clasp on with will be a really tiny ring to try and put on the clasp. You have to try and fiddle your way onto the onto the clasp. So what I'm actually going to try and do is use a ring, uh, and I'm going to see what it looks like. But I'm going to use a ring. that one and see what it is um, from the Byzantine bracelet okay come out that way then actually I'll use the other one that's already open so we'll get the other one out um, because th these rings are, are a little bit larger so it will be less fiddly to try and um, Try and get the clasp in place. And I guess, well, I, I was going to say I could use something like a magnetic clasp, but I'm not sure I'd, I'd want to trust a sterling, I'd want to trust a, a silver metal bracelet um, to a magnetic clasp, which if I caught it, it would drop off. Right, so we've got that on the end. Now you're going to have the fun. 
of watching me try and fasten this. Which could be interesting. Uh, so it wants to be, it's going to come out that way. Right, meh. Don't twist on me. I want you that way. Yeah. Come on. There we go. So there you go, guys and gals. One silver metal bracelet made from sterling silver rings. Complete and in one piece and I'm wearing it. Finally, I knew we'd get it done. And that's the other one that we finished tonight. And guess what? This one's heavier. <laughs> um, which is a Byzantine bracelet for Mrs. Zaragan Art, my lovely wife. And with that, gentlemen, that is it. That's enough for tonight. Thank you all for watching. It, it's been a little bit frustrating, but it has been fun. And... Uh, just want to say thank you everybody and uh, Exilian also thank you again for that it was fantastic so um, everybody have a good night thank you very much if there is anybody that's watching that isn't following I do of course encourage you to do so um, you can also follow me on uh, Twitter it's at Zaragana details will be on the end plate in a moment and if you come back later the below the stream window on the other hand I will be streaming tomorrow night, so if you want to try and catch me, it'll be about 8pm UK time, 1900 hours GMT. Oh, what? Mm, two hours, 40 minutes ago. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Bye bye.